Hello, this is a situation that we're faced with periodically in dentistry, a missing single mandibular incisor. When you think about the options for replacing that tooth, you could do a flipper. That's kind of a pain for the patient because they've got a removable appliance and food collects around it and it moves and they can feel it with their tongue. You could do a Maryland bridge which fits on the back of the adjacent teeth. The lingual side is cemented to the lingual side of the this tooth and this tooth. You really don't want to do a full crown retainer because the, the lower incisors are so small already that if you remove a millimeter and a half all the way around the tooth, you've just got a little a pencil lead remaining, or toothpick, and the chances of the tooth needing endodontics because of hypersensitivity are great, which exacerbates the, the, uh, the chance that the tooth would fracture. So the other option is an implant. Now because the ridge is so small, this ridge is so thin, facial lingually, you really can't use uh, a root form implant most of the time because you'll remember you'd like to have a millimeter of alveolar uh, process around the implant, surrounding the implant. So in a case like this, our only option if we're going to go with an implant is a small diameter implant or a mini implant. Now because this patient is younger, I think he was about 17 or 18 years old, you know, he's got a long time to go. And I would, if it was my son or myself, I'd rather deal with an implant than a Maryland bridge. And certainly rather deal with an implant than a removable flipper. And like we said, you, I hardly, I don't put uh, full crown retainers on lower incisor teeth I, just because you you compromise the tooth and chances of endodontics and tooth fracture are so great so a small diameter implant is the best option in my opinion in this situation but it's complicated i'm going to show you why it worked out well but i'll show you why this bone is typically very thin on the facial and even if you've got a millimeter of bone around the, the coronal part of the implant, chances are you may not have a millimeter all the way around it as you go apically into the alveolar process. So see, we've got plenty of room here. We're not worried about drilling into anything, but keeping the pilot drill straight and as the, I'm actually going to drill to depth with the pilot drill to control the angulation of the implant because if you don't, that implant will travel and it will move side to side or facial lingually. I want to control the channel that the implant will be traveling on. So first of all, we're going to administer painless and profound local anesthesia. Now I'm going to anesthetize both left and right of the mandible just because that tooth is sort of in the center and I don't want to take a chance on the patient having any discomfort. And so I want to hit the middle of the spot and I want to be maybe just a tiny bit to the lingual if possible. This is Perigard chlorhexidine just wiping the spot, drying it, and I'm marking the root of the adjacent teeth and the center of the edentulous area. And the trick is keeping that drill parallel to these adjacent teeth. Because I'd like to drill to depth, as I said, and control the angulation. You can see I'm just a tiny bit to the lingual because I want as much bone as possible on the facial, so I've drilled to depth. Check your angulation. So 
you're going to, as you screw the implant in, you want to constantly check and be sure that it's the, in the right direction. So you've got a choice of either a 2.0 or a 2.5 millimeter implant. I'd rather use a 2.5. If you use a 2.5, you've got to have a ridge that's what? 3.5, 4.5, almost a five millimeter ridge. So if you don't have five millimeters of alveolar crest facial lingual, then you should go with a two millimeter width small diameter implant. I believe this was a 2.5, but you're, you know, it's just so complicated because you're working with such a small amount of bone facial lingually, and then having that implant travel in the perfect direction is also tricky because you don't want to drill into the roots of either of the adjacent teeth and you don't want the implant to be touching the root if possible of either of the adjacent teeth. And once I place the implant, you'll see how thin the bone is on the facial apical. So I decide the angle is not exactly right. I'm gonna change the angle just a little bit. So as long as you can get implant stability, meaning you can't screw the implant in with the finger driver, then the bone will osseointegrate with the implant. So I'm changing that angle just a little bit. And what are you using for your guidelines? You're using, you want the implant to be parallel to the adjacent teeth. And then you can take a radiograph as you screw it in. So that looks just right. Now luckily this is not, the gingival aspect of the implant is not in the aesthetic zone. So if you do have a little bit of darkness right here, it's not that big a deal because this doesn't, is not displayed when the patient's talking or smiling. So you don't want to be able to screw it to place with the finger driver. If you can, it's not going to osseointegrate. You want to have to torque it or screw it with the the winged wrench. So that's really snug now. Okay, that's good and good and tight. So that's a good line parallel to these adjacent teeth. And I want to screw it in until the shelf of the implant is right at or just barely below the gingival line. Okay, this is an impression coping. You can see here's the shelf right here. And I'm just barely adjusting the interproximal of the adjacent teeth to give just a little more room or the crown because it's such a tight space and I'm adjusting this impression coping just a little bit so it doesn't touch the adjacent teeth. I want it to fit flush with the shoulder of the implant. Now I'm going to place provisional cement with Vaseline in the impression coping just so it sits tight on the implant. If I didn't use this it would move around a little bit. And I want to be sure that it's tight on the shoulder and not touching the adjacent teeth. For polyether with custom tray impression, 
These are really complicated cases because of all the points I made. There's thin ridge, adjacent teeth, the right angle of the implant going into the alveolar process. You don't want to touch the adjacent teeth. Very tricky. So here's the impression coping. Just checking the implant. Then I'm going to take a shade and then this is the provisional coping. You pop that on the tooth and then squirt flowable on it. I'm not going to cement it. I'm just going to let the flowable composite contact the adjacent teeth. I'm not worried about going down to the, the uh, gingival line. Like I said, it's not in the aesthetic zone. I'm going to adjust that provisional. It's a high water provisional, super gingival, because it's not in the aesthetic zone. Take it out of occlusion. So this is a lithium desilicate or Emax final crown. Tissue looks good. You can see how thin that tissue is in the apical half of the root. So you can use a small laminar implant that's either made for denture retention or you can use one that's made for crowns. I usually just use one that's made the same one I use for denture retention. And it's got a lot of, of a mechanical retention I'm checking the contacts. We're a little bit tight, so I'm doing some adjustment. Is she mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's in the Bahamas. I'm sure you can, but uh, I can't. I cannot. I want the floss to pop through, but I want it to pass through. I don't want it to be stuck. This occlude, which is very good for checking in proximal contact. See, it goes all the way to place now. You gotta take your time when you're adjusting interproximal contacts, because it's easy to take too much off of one side and have an open contact. So don't adjust very much at a time if you ever do have to adjust a contact. This was a unique situation. Hardly ever do I have to adjust interproximal contacts because we fabricate the crowns or we finalize the interproximal margins of the crown on a solid model. This was just trickier since it was a small diameter implant. A good solid fit now, flush on the shoulder, tight contacts, but not too tight. Then I'm gonna polish with these Shofu rubber wheels. Then I'm gonna alcohol the crown after I've done that and place Vaseline on the interproximal surfaces of the, of the crown. Final cement. Pop floss through the interproximal contacts before the cement sets because you don't want it to set up on the interproximal surfaces. Wipe it. Don't remove the final cement until it has initial set. You want it to peel off, not wipe off. And I talk about that in all my Cranon Bridge and Veneer videos. You don't ever want to wipe it off. You want it to peel off. So if the patient leaves that day, no contact on the, the restoration, 
remove these orthodontic wires. The patient was undergoing orthodontics at the same time, and the orthodontist wanted the, the restoration placed before he removed the orthodontic band, so I'm removing them for him this day. Just polishing those off with a, a flame-shaped fine diamond and then a 30-fluted carbide burr. Soft Lux uh, polishing disc. I like to wet the teeth, and here's the final restoration. You can see how thin this bone is and tissue down in this area. So there's bone around the implant, but it's not very thick just because this bone is not very thick. That's the Dental Minute. These techniques work, and they work every time. It's time. It is time to take your dentistry practice to the next level and you know it. You just haven't known how to do it until right now. That's where DentistryMasterclasses.com steps in. At DentistryMasterclasses.com, Dr. Cutbreath is offering you his greatest work and his best cases. Here's everything that you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and Dentistry Masterclasses comprehensive cases for study and reference. And you're going to get before and after photos of Dr. Cutbreath's fantastic restored work. So, great deal. 40 bucks, that is it. For 40 bucks, you're gonna get all of this. So go right now to dentistrymasterclasses.com and subscribe today and change your life, change your practice.